Hello, I'm uh, Helen. So, and me and Ken, we're part of um, a team of data scientists at Anxious Digital. And one of the uh, projects we're working on aims to roll up RAP across the organization. Uh, reproducible analytical pipelines, or RAP, as put by the Government Statistical Service, are automated statistical and analytical processes, and they incorporate um, elements of software engineering best practice to ensure that the pipelines are reproducible, auditable, efficient, and high quality. Anxious Digital is a very large organization with multiple directorates and disciplines, so there was and is a real challenge of embedding RAP practices across the organization. So we have pulled a few slides here that cover the key points that helped our RAP cause and lessons learned from the RAP rollout in Anxious Digital. So one of the, the most important things we have done is to very directly tie RAP back to our um, organizational strategy. Our leadership team are tasked with delivering the strategy, but they are often non-technical. And this means that it falls to us. It means that it falls to us to explain very clearly how and why RAP is such an important element in delivering these goals. Um, we have spent a lot of time engaging upwards, and, and this has a big impact in terms of getting us the resources we need to bring this work forward, but also makes it more likely for teams we work with to get the, that defended time to be able to focus on RAP. So a shout out here. What we really like and we really appreciate this report from the, the Office for Statistics Regulation on the barriers to adopting RAP. In the past few months of pursuing RAP work at Anxious Digital, we have encountered nearly every one of the, um, the barriers that, have, that are listed in this report. And the solutions that the report recommends have been helpful in every case. And uh, many of the activities that I'll talk about in the next few slides originated from reading and talking about this paper. And I would also encourage you all to have to to go through this report and then have a read and why not perhaps um, share the findings with your senior managers and, and stakeholders. So one of our biggest successes has been to agree to a process uh, for Anxious Digital to share code publicly. Anxious Digital, um, we host a an internal GitLab instance where our code is version controlled. The benefit of this internal hosting is that it reduces the likelihood of any sort of accidental data leaks. However, hosting our code in internally makes it very difficult for anyone to access it and to have sort of any sides of how the analytical teams are working. And so Anxious Digital is extremely protective of patient data. And so in order to convince our leadership team to allow us to put code in the open, we tried to address the concerns with, um, about security head on. And we have designed a review and sign off process that teams need to complete before they can release the, um, the code publicly. And we are using GitHub for sharing code in the open. And this process, it requires both internal and external code reviews to ensure nothing risky is included in said GitHub um, repository. Now, the second benefit that comes from this, from this move, is that for the first time, um, NHS digital teams can see each other's work. And we have already seen that many teams are recreating the same types of functionality, for example, uh, code for data uh, quality checks. By putting these processes out there for everyone to be able to see them, we can start identifying common parts of publication code and then make those uh, reusable. If there are any other departments on this call that are having similar issues, then please get in touch and we're very happy to share our approach on uh, publishing code. So, so this map here, so this is what we call the RAP maturity map or maturity levels or maturity ladder. One of the challenges we face is that many of the teams at Anxious Digital are completely new to Python. And for teams who are learning to use Python, this is a real opportunity for them to set off, to set them off on the right path on um, by embedding RAP practices from the start. On the other hand, there can be a risk of sort of discouraging teams if we ask them to go too fast too soon. For example, we did have a situation where a non-technical stakeholder was insistent that everyone from the team should be trained from zero, from zero to 100 to basically expert Python user in a short amount of time, which is impossible. 
And to help with this, we have laid out this rap maturity model that sets out um, a sequence for teams to tackle the difference, the, the different rap practices. And our goal here is to set teams off on the right track, but also to help them identify the areas which have sort of the best impact to effort ratio. And once these, uh, once our analytical teams have started the journey through these rep maturity levels, then they can decide which sort of uh, level to attack to to tackle um, next on the maturity ladder uh, ladder at whatever point suits them, um, based on um, their own requirements and and needs. We have also spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to best support teams engaged with rep. We have now tried out three different models of engagement. The first one, we basically merged fully with the team. So you have the rep team here in black and the team we were supporting in white. We led on the planning and development and design with the team being mentored alongside us. That worked really well. The analyst team got very good training and we had a chance to get our hands on some code and figure out what types of processes were required. The problem with this approach is that it's very res resource intensive. We would expect the rep team to sort of be embedded with the with the other team for at least a couple of months, but then we would but then when we have a hunt with hundreds of publications and many analytical teams, this won't scale well. The second approach we tried was to work with a team of mixed stability, giving them control of the development process and with us offering on-demand support. So the benefit of this approach is that the, the analyst team, they really get the chance to grapple with the code. And as a result, they I think they have learned more effectively. But the problem with this approach is that without much, without much guidance from us, the rap team, they have struggled to design the next stages of the work to really sort of like a higher quality. We've done input sessions with them on refactoring code, um, making better use of functions and offering code review sessions, but the dynamic has been a bit more difficult to manage, particularly with the mixture of sort of like high and low Python skills. The thing that worked best here is that we had a pair coding support, sort of like a coding buddy system. And this is because it allowed us to manage the sort of very different Python skill level in the team of, of analysts more effectively. So the third approach we used was to basically identify a highly skilled individual in the analyst team who wanted to lead on the development work. And then we focus on our efforts on supporting the uh, said individual. And this has been a very effective approach from the perspective of a team as it is easier to manage and it's less resource intensive. Um, we find we can make faster progress towards a stronger sort of code outcome, but there is a risk of leaving the rest of the analyst team behind. And the other problem with this approach is that it depends on teams already having a skilled individual. Our current thinking is to improve on this third option by thinking about developing sort of like wrap pipelines and training teams as two sort of different to distinct services that we might provide. Um, overall, though, this process of figuring out what works, uh, what works best depends on like a team by team basis. So finally, perhaps the most, um, this is perhaps the most important work of, of, of what we've done um, so far is basically building this, the RAP community of practice, which is available on GitHub. We have worked um, alongside teams to understand their pain points but instead of facing those pain points at once, we instead try to figure out something that is reusable, a reusable solution. And sometimes this means producing some guidance videos that walk, uh, walk analysts through a workflow, through the problem and how to solve it. Um, other times this means that we might develop some reusable code templates, um, some data quality sort of code checks, and then the team can adapt for their own needs. In each case, um, we can make these resources available on the RAP community of practice page. And we basically, we're not trying to replicate general tutorials that you can easily find online, but instead we have provided guidance that is sort of tailored to NHS Digital along with links to other resources. And an important part of this is that we keep improving the materials by asking teams to use them and receiving feedback.